They are going to pronounce it in the throat. So they are going past the alveolar. Excuse me. Can one person, just one, tell me the exact pronunciation so that I can always mention it? Uvula. Uvula. We all agree? Uvula. Like this? Okay. So they go past the uvula. So what happens, they will say, This is the wrong sound. Not, not everybody does this. But subhanAllah, whenever I teach people and they read Quran, usually I know whether they're from Morocco. From Morocco, they will pronounce the jinn uh, wrongly. They, exactly, right? And so every, like if I to teach the Turkish community, they will say, Salamun alaykum. Now they, they introduce this in their Quran. So anyway, so the Qaf uh, and the Jin, for example, the Sudanese people have a problem with the Jin. Ra. Yani, uh, so Jibel, Jibel, instead of Jibel, right? So anyway, Qaf, when you go to the back of your mouth with, with your thumb, you don't have to do this now, then you will feel that there is a hard palate and a soft palate. Even with your tongue, you can feel it. If you touch, when you go to the back with the, the tip of your tongue, you feel there is a soft space. This is what we call the soft palate. The qaf and the kaf, they are pronounced by touching the back of the tongue, no? by touching the soft palate. Yeah. Okay? So say and try to go as close as you can to the uvula. Yes. Now when you have situated the don't say it yet, try to go a bit yani, to the front of the mouth. When I say a bit, I'm talking about millimeters. You, you're going to place the kaf right in front of the qaf. When I say in front, it's always this side. This is the front, this is the back, okay? Before the qaf. So you say, aqqa, sabr, aqqa, ak, aqqa, ak. Say it. Aqqa, ak. Okay, so that was wrong. Like when you say the kaf, we need it to be gentle. So if you say ak, then you're too much to the middle. Say ak. Exactly, a bit, a bit more to the back. Yeah, the, the, that one was correct. So, ak, so we say ki, kitabun, and not kitabun. You hear the difference? Yes. Ki and ki. This is my ki. Where's ki? When I say ki, it's here. And now it is, where's my ki? <laughs> so I say ak. ak say ak ki. Ak ki. Yes. It's not like ki, is it? it? There's a difference. So you can only get that sound, which we call al, al, al hams that air is escaping between your tongue and your soft palate. So when you pronounce the kaf, which I'm pronouncing wrongly now, I'm saying kaf, but I should have said kaf. But I, when you talk normally, you don't have to do this. So why is there air escaping? Because that part of your tongue, that, the back of your tongue, you can't completely press it against the soft palate. And this is why there is air escaping. As for the qaf, aqqaf, yani it stops the air from coming out. Not with aq, aqqaf. Okay? So these two letters, now, they are these letters that we pronounce close to the soft palate. So, but what are, is it exit point? It is the tongue. We call it the back of the tongue. Okay? It's the back of the tongue. So the tongue has the most exit points. So, um, no. I think this, this is clear for now, right? So the tongue has actually 10 different articulation points. The tongue has 10 different articulation points. So the first one, so, and so it also pronounces 8 different letters. 18, I mean. So the tongue gives sound, gives sound to 18 letters. Okay, so now the tongue is divided into um, five different areas, into five different areas, okay, which is the deepest part of the tongue, the middle part of the tongue, the side of the tongue, 
the head of the tongue and the tip of the tongue. Okay? The head of the tongue would be right behind the tip of the tongue. That is what we call the head of the tongue. So you have the tip of the tongue, and then you have here, that would be the head of the tongue. Okay? Head and tip. So these are the five... Yes? Yes. The deepest part of the tongue. No? And that is where we said the qaf and the kaf. No? Then we have the middle part of the tongue. And I'm not going to mention the letters now. Then we have the head of the tongue. And then we have the tip of the tongue. So this is the tongue here. Okay? So we have deepest part of the tongue. Middle part of the tongue. Then we have the side of the tongue. Then we have the head of the tongue. And we have the tip of the tongue. Okay? So these are five areas where you, the, which you will use to give sound to the letters. So don't break your head over these, what? Over these letters now, because that is what we are going to have a look at. Allah. And now what you need to know is that the palate no, is divided into the hard, hard palate, as I said, and the soft one. So we, we call this al-hanak. No? No. So if you push with your tongue against the soft palate, it's for different letters than if you were to touch your tongue, uh, the, the, the hard palate with your tongue. No? So you're not allowed to mix them up. I mean, this is what we are going to look at, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deepest part of the tongue is for the letter Qaf. As I said, that's the deepest part of the tongue. And it touches the soft palate. No? Then we have the deepest part also in the tongue, but a bit not as deep, was for the Kaf. They're both for the soft palate. But the Kaf would be closer to the middle of the tongue than the Qaf. And the Qaf would be closer to the uvula than the Kaf. Allah. Because they are like very close to each other, in some qira'at, they would, they would merge these letters. Now, because they are so close to one another. Zalika, uh, for example. Inna fi zalika qasamun. Now. They would just merge the kaf into the qaf. They, would, they wouldn't say, Inna fi dhalika qasamun. They would just say, Inna fi dhalik qasamun. You see this? The same with, Nakhlukukum. No? Okay. So if we were to say, Nakhlukukum, then even in hafs, we, we, we can read Alam Nakhlukkum or we can say Alam Nakhlukkum. You see this? We remove the Qaf entirely. Or we keep the heavy sound of the Qaf but we pronounce a Qaf. Uh, we pronounce a Kaf. Alam Nakhlukkum. You see this? So why do they do this? Well, because they are very similar. Because they're so close to one another that some of the Qurra they read it just like one letter, or they read it, they merge one letter into the other. Okay? So, Qaf and Kaf. Is that clear? Okay. So, who wants to repeat what I have said? You can come to the front. Yes? I will never ask the sisters to do this, but brothers, I will choose you. And then you come to the front, and then... You just explain in one minute. For one minute? Yes, one minute. <laughs> you are going to tell everything which has been said in one minute. Okay. Right. Skip the introduction. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you have you know, the tongue, there are five articulation points of the tongue. You have the, um, the back of the tongue, the side of the tongue, the head of the tongue, the tip of the tongue. I meant something else. Middle, middle, middle. Which one is it? Middle, middle. 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 middle of the tongue. Um, the qaf uh, is closer to the uh, uvula, and the kaf is slightly um, further from it. You have, and this is because of the palate. Palate, there are two palates. You have the soft palate and the hard palate. 
the gaff of the oval needs to be closer to the uvula, or the gaff be closer to the middle of the tongue. Um, um, uh, I think good. Okay. It's up. Awesome. Okay. No, 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 no. It's good. No, alhamdulillah. So, what did he forget? What? Yeah, we started with the throat, remember? And then we said that there were five exit points and that they were divided into subcategories, major and minor. But I, I suppose that you thought we had to start here. So even there, we have missed out something important, that the qaf has no air escaping, while the kaf has air escaping. The reason why is because we can't push with the tongue to... Uh, to put, we can't push, uh, put too much pressure on the kaf uh, to the soft palate, and this is why there is air escaping, right? And then we also said that this is the reason why some of the scholars, the Qurra, they merge between the Qaf and the Kaf. Okay? Is that clear? The reason why I don't write everything down is because I want you to write. Because then audio, vi visual, and writing yourself, please do so. Okay? Because if I have to write everything down, then you don't have to do anything, you just take it home, and you will forget. I want you to revise, I want you to live with this inshallah. Okay. So, and then we also forgot to mention, Barakallahu Fikum, that the Qaf and the Kaf, how are these letters called? Al-Ahruf or Huruf al halqiya Naam? Halqiya. Halqiya. Huruf Halqiya. Okay. So all of this I want to know. Next time, inshallah, when you come, there will be an exam of everything we have seen until now. Okay? So you come, that's only 15 minutes, and I will not correct it. Inshallah, we will correct it together. Okay? You just give it to your neighbor. Now I'm not going to correct all your exams. That's at the end. So you have what? You have all this next week. So everything we have spoken about, everything we have mentioned, which is a part of what you need to know, you will be asked about it next time. Okay? And I will go into detail. So the next ones, yes? Um, so, halqiya, does that mean oral cavity? Or no, halqiya means throat, throat letters. Throat, throat, yeah. Throat, yeah. Throat, yeah. Throat. yeah. Okay. Yes? Okay. Yes, qafin ka. Ah, sorry, okay. No, no, no. Yeah, so, uh, the Hamza Ha Ainun Ha Ainun Kha or Halkiya, not the Qaf and the Kaf. Of course. Okay. So, how do we call the Qaf and the Kaf? What kind of letters are they? Who knows? Yes. That's true. But I mean, like we said, throat letters, how do we call it? Tongue letters. We call them Lithawiya or what? Look it up against next time that will be a part of your exam. They have uh, a secondary name. Okay, you are going to look for them yourself. I'm going to see if you can find it. Okay, let us continue. <clears throat> the next one is what we call um, or the middle part of the tongue, the middle part of the tongue, which is here. So forget the dot, it's the yellow ones here. The jeem, the sheen, and the ya. They are pronounced in the middle of the mouth and against the hard palate. Jeem, ya, sheen is all happening in the middle of your mouth, the middle of your tongue. So say a, 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 sh, a, sh, a mm. Like now, when you say the English, English, sh, where is it? It's almost in the beginning of your mouth, isn't it? You say sh, it's there, that's wrong. So you need to go more to the back. Say first, so try to concentrate. You say ash and ash in the middle here, not ash. Ash. Now you say ashin. Shajara. Yes. So don't go sha, go sha. 
Shut. You have to do it with, the, try with the sides of your mouth, towards your teeth, towards your palate. Shut, shut. So you, you, put, you make, you, your tongue goes a bit like this. Shut. Sure. This is the only way that you can pronounce a uh, correct sheen. The same with John, uh, sorry, John Jean. <laughs> People in English, they will say ja, ja. Where is it again? You feel it? It's in the front. Ja. You're putting your tongue against your palate there where we pronounce, we, Zama, the Arabs, where you pronounce the ba. That's where you pronounce your dom. So you need to go further to the back and you say Ajja. Yeah, I can't. A bit. Yes. 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 Khalas. Ajja. Shaja ra. Just one, please. Yes, you. Like if I were to say it in an English way, I would say Shaja ra. Shaja. Shaja. And I'm saying Shaja. Shaja. You hear the difference between Shaja and Shaja? You don't? Who does? Yes, people do. Again? Shaja. Shaja. Sha. It's, it's more hidden, right? Why do I need to do this? Because as you will see, one of the characteristics of the, of the Sheen is that there is air and I'm blowing through your mouth. It's going through your mouth. So you have shh. If you go it from if you do it from here, shh, it's going out immediately. So it's shh. That's right. Now in a wrong way. It's difficult. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم شا شا Okay, it's small differences. So usually uh, teachers will not correct you in the sheen, but they will do in the jeem. Because a lot of people, the jeem, what will they do? Like the Moroccans would say, Zawja, Ja, Ja. That's how they would say it. Okay, thank you. So anyway, the middle of the tongue is for the Adja, the A and the Ash. Okay, Adj, A, Ash. See it? One by one. Adj, A, Ash. Adj, A, Ash. Yes. Adj, A, Ash. Adj, A, Ash. Yes. Adj, A, Ash. 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 Yes. Adj, A, Ash. Your G was too much to the front. Okay. If people record you, they think I'm teaching you sihr or something. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Yes. Yes. Okay. Somebody else? So who wants to try? No one? Yes. Good, very good. Yes. Yes, that was good. But you see, it takes effort, right? When you focus on it. Yes, please. Say the first one again. Okay. When you say edge, you're a bit too much here. Take it further to the back. You say edge. No, just her, please. Yes. Okay. A bit more. Edge. Yes, good. Okay. So you will. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Very good. Yes. Okay, your gene was a bit because what, what is happening when you pronounce your gene too much in the front, there will be air escaping as well. And the gene, like now I'm saying it, I'm saying it wrongly because I'm talking. Like gene, G, G is wrong. It's gene. It's not gene. J, edge, ash, edge, j is wrong. So go a bit further to the back. Edge. Yes, that was good. Very good. Did you hear the difference yourself? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. Yes. Somebody else? Hold on. Yes. Okay, a bit more to the to the middle. Edge. Very good. Okay. Very good. Yes, please. 
okay, your sh it was a bit too much. You felt it, right? So I hear it, and you feel it. So it's ash, a bit more. Yes. How are you going to do it? You're going to imagine that you are bringing the sides of your tongue, of the middle of your tongue, a bit upwards. So you say ash. Yes, exactly. I saw another hand. Yes. Yes, very good. Yes. That's it? Yes, very good. Okay. So did, did you feel... So in, at the very beginning, it will feel uh, difficult because you're used to pronounce the sh here. Sh, sh, right? Sh, y. It's all in the front of the mouth. Look when you say you. Where do you say it? You. But you... Uh, where do you say shout? It's the front, right? Shout. Now you have to say shout. Yes. You see? Okay. Don't ever use the articulation points, the Arabic articulation points to speak English. That's wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean, because every language has particular exit points for that particular letter. Like the R might be different in this language and that language. So don't mix them up and don't say, no, only this one is correct, this is from Allah. That's only when, when you speak Arabic. Huh? It has to do with language. So hold your horses. Okay, so Aj, A-Ash, that's the middle part of the tongue. We call this Al-Ahruf Al-Shajariya. And the reason why we call this because they come from Shajar Al-Fam, yani from the middle of the mouth. Now, okay. Then now we have the head and the tip of the tongue. This is quite interesting. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going... So now, the first thing we are going to do is the letter Bad. The letter Bad. Okay, so you have your first tooth, right? That's one. Second, third, fourth. Now the fifth one. That is where your tongue needs to be for the bod. You have one, two, three, four. You bring your tongue back to the fifth one. Okay, so if just feel one, two, three, four, the fifth one. If they remove these teeth, no problem, it's still there. No? So, and there is where you are going to pronounce up bod. So you're going to bring that tongue back. And you're going to elevate the back of your tongue to provoke something which we call compression and elevation. Baw. Baw. So the tip of your tongue shouldn't touch anything. It should be the side of your tongue which will be touching it. Baw. Baw. Now I got somebody asking me, uh, some say that it's okay if you pronounce the bod like a va, for example. Or that you can pronounce the bod with the tip of your tongue against your teeth. This is incorrect. Yeah? So the Prophet ﷺ used to pronounce the bod on both sides at the same time. Bod, like I'm doing now. Umar ibn Khattab who used to do it on the right side. Bod. And the majority of people do it on the left side. Bod. But you can do both. So uh, all three of them is correct. So where, so if you feel, that's the first one. One, two, three, four, five. That is where you are going, there, that is where you are going to put you, the side of your tongue. And then you are not going to touch anything with the tip of your tongue. There should be a space between your front teeth and the tip of your tongue. Okay? Bod. This is the letter where the majority of people make a mistake. I'm sorry, you're always the first one. <laughs> Let us start there. Law. <laughs> okay. So a lot of people like him are asking, law, law. That's wrong because the only thing, like this is the side of my tongue, right? These are my teeth. <laughs> so that are the front teeth here. I'm bringing my tongue back and this here, the side is touching there where my teeth go into my gums. That side, my tongue will touch. Ba. Ba. Okay? Not da, da. Don't ever touch your front teeth when you pronounce the wad. 
Okay, so you please. Dog. Dog. No. You, uh, dog. Just bring your tongue back. Dog. Dog. Yes, alhamdulillah. Dog. You. Dog. What? Dog. Dog. I'll be here now. I'll be I, I can live with that. It's okay. Yes. Bob. Okay, and also don't don't try to bring your mouth all the way to the red light or the rift and like bot just bot. Bod. Everybody got it's okay. Just you know. Bob. 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 Yes. Bob. Again? Bob. Now your your yes, you where you you're pronouncing it correctly, you just need to bring the back of your tongue up. Bob. 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 Yes, beautiful. Bob. Good, yes. MashaAllah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I want you to, push, uh, to put more pressure on the side of your tongue against your teeth and to bring the back of your tongue up a bit more. Ba. Ba. Yes. yes. Ba. Ba. So you really need to feel the side of your tongue against the, f the fifth and backwards, right? This space. Ba. Ba. If you do on both sides, maybe it's easier for you. Ba. No, I think one side is easier, isn't it? Okay, so anyway, this is the side of the tongue, yes. When you say side of the tongue, can you be a bit more specific on that? Like, is it more to the back, more to the front? Well, I, I actually gave the example. I said, this is my fifth, fifth uh, tooth, we say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said, I bring my tongue back. That's what I said. So this, how can I do it better than this? I don't know. The diagram the books. Yes. Okay, so what I'm doing, these are my teeth, right? Yes. When I pronounce the bot, I'm, not, I'm going to elevate that part of my tongue upwards. This part of my tongue from here till here. That part is going upwards against my teeth. Which teeth? Starting from the fifth one to your molars. Is it like a more the back end of the side? As in the side, but is it more the back end of the side? You want me to divide the, the side of the tongue into three layers? Uh, it means, <laughs> it means length like this. No, lengthwise I explained already. How did I explain this? You said put it back. Put it By back saying back. putting your tongue back and starting from what? Fifth. From the fifth. So you're... If you keep your tongue, if you don't put it back, what happens? You will touch either your high palate with the front of your tongue, or you will touch these teeth, which are so you ball. Don't overthink it. <laughs> Is it from where your tongue starts to curve? That's yes, that's yes, yes, exactly. Okay, if you want it, the last two thirds of the tongue, that's what it's going to say. Okay, the last two thirds of your tongue. The fifth cannot touch the teeth. Nope. Yeah. If someone swallows his tongue, I'm not responsible. No, neither. It has to float in the air. Ball. Ball. It's okay. As long as you don't press, if it touches it without putting any pressure, no problem. We're humans. Uh, but ball. Uh, with me, it doesn't touch at all. Ball, 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 okay? Anyway, that's where we pronounce it. When you are going to read, I'm going to correct, and we have some of the people here who are being taught for the moment, inshallah, and then they will teach you yourself. So we will have different groups with, inshallah, five teachers who will then also teach other people. That's correct, isn't it? So, um, inshallah, good. We continue. So we have the bod. That's the side of the tongue, okay? Allah. Then we have the letter Lam. Okay? So the letter Lam. Okay? The Lam. This is the nearest part of the side of the tongue to the tip. The nearest part of the side of the tongue of the tip. Okay. That doesn't make sense when I listen to myself. It doesn't matter. So if this would be a tongue then this part here would be for the lamb. Not the tip of the tongue. This would be the exact tip of the tongue. And this here is the side of the tip of the tongue. 
So you are, your tongue is actually going like this behind these teeth. One, two, three. Okay? The one, two, three. And you're going to put it only there. Lam. Lam. So the tip of your tongue is not going to touch anything. So you feel that you have your um, mouth is going like this, right? I mean your palate. So you're going to push with the sides of both sides of the tip of your tongue, not the tip of your tongue. So the, the problem with what the people do, they go with the tip of their tongue against the palate and they say la, like you say la la la, right? So that will be there. Now you have, if this is the tongue, this here and this here will go against the palate. So you take the tip of your tongue a bit back. Lam. Yeah. And if you do that, then you feel that you're saying Lam against the sides of your palate and not with the tip of your tongue. Lam. Yeah. So when you say Lam, instead of saying La, then take your tongue a bit back. Lam. A bit means like this. Do you feel that it's touching both parts or not? Lam. The sides between this here and this. Lam. No, you are saying la, la. Don't do this. Lam. No, I'm saying in your mouth. Where, where's your tongue going? Well, as I just explained, it's behind here. Yes. So it's not with your tip of your tongue doing la. It's the sides of the tip. La. Do both sides need touch? Yes, both sides. Look, you see this? <coughs> this here is touching it there. It's not exactly the tip, it's the side of it. You see that? So these two sides are going to touch on either side the upper panel. My explanation is so bad that I need pictures. Scott? Yes? I'll just give a picture. Ah, okay. What? Yeah, to ask you? No, no, no. No? Okay, yes. So with this class of the side of the tongue. Excuse me? This is the side of the tip of the tongue. It's still called tip of the tongue, but it's the sides. Like so when you, we, you yeah. said there's five so there's Yes, but don't worry about that yet. We're going to, to mention all of that again. Okay? One, two, three, four. Okay? You... <coughs> there we go. So what you can do, that's for you. I can put my tongue right here, right? That would be the tip of the tongue when I go la. Yeah. Then I would put the middle of my tongue straight here. Is that clear? La. Now what I'm doing, I'm using this part. So this part I don't use. I use this part and this part. La. So I'm not, this tip of my tongue, the exact tip of the tongue is not touching anything. La. La. You're not putting pressure with the tip of your tongue. It's exactly the size of it. La. Can, can you tell the difference by this? I could, yes. Could you do it in both ways? Okay, look, you can find it when you say the word, for example, Ja'alna. Okay. So now if I say it with exactly the tip of the, to uh, the tip where the people pronounce the noon, I will merge the lamb and the noon together and they will become one. People will say Ja'alna. Ja'alna. Because I'm using exactly the same exit point. Now I'm saying Ja'alna. Ja'alna. Okay, do you hear the difference or not? 
So it is by not putting any pressure with the tip of my tongue on, on the what? On the lamb. So I'm just going to put the pressure to the sides of the tip of the tongue. Ja'alna. Ja'alna. So you're going to... Is it clear or not? Yes. Um, is that, should, should the tongue come off of the lamb to go back onto the nose? Well, this would be a kind of izhar that we would do, yes. So we would release the tongue and then go to the nose. But what people do, do, they don't release it, so it makes it sound like one. So they say, Waja'alna. And now we say, Waja'alna. You hear this? Ja'alna. <laughs> Instead of Ja'alna. Is that clear? You don't hear the difference? You should hear. Did, do you hear the difference? Yes. Yes, yes they do. <laughs> Excuse me? Ah, okay, but do you understand the difference now or not? That it, it, it's supposed to be obvious. Oh yeah, then yeah. Like <laughs> no, because we said don't use just the tip, the tip of the tip of your tongue. Don't do this. Take it back and then just put pressure on that which is right on the side of. To be quite frankly, it's okay. Yani. So the, the wrong way is la. Like, like, yes, that's wrong. Okay, and the right way is is it la la la. This is right. Okay, I'll explain that. You understand? Yes. I can say la, la with the tip of my tongue, and I can say la. La, la, la. No. Okay, anyway, yes. So with Allah, like, it's like, um, it's instinctive to go into the tip of the tongue. Yes, exactly. Do you feel the difference as well? Or not? Not yet. Okay, it's like he said, when we say Allah, we are always pronouncing it with the tip of the tongue. But we say, so we can say, قولي لا, and this is why a lot. Uh, if we can stop uh, exercising the lamp, please. So this is why a lot of people, especially in the indo pak community, they say Allah, or Al they, how do you say it? Allah. Min Allah. No? Or they, they say, the, Allah. <laughs> you don't say, say this. I heard many people say this. So, La. So we have Min Allah. Min Allah. Now, I can only do this when I pronounce the lamp correctly. Um, and I, it's not mean Allah or mean no mean Allah. <laughs> did you did you find it now? Yes, yes. It's done. Inshallah. 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 Now, okay. So what you need to know: don't overthink it. Just the the tip of the tip of your tongue. Take it a little back, a little bit backwards, so that the tip of the tip of your tongue doesn't touch anything. Lam, and you try to use the sides of your tongue, of the tip of your tongue, to put pressure against your palate. This, don't break your head over it. The majority of people won't even listen to it. Okay, it's just articulation point. It's okay. Ja'al na. Ja'al na. Okay, you can give my... Okay. So, as it is the side of the tip of the tongue, we say, some say it's the side of the tip of the tongue, and some say it's the side of the tongue. And then it would be the, the, the first side of the tongue, and the blood would be the two last third of the tongue. Okay? Anyway. So, the L articulation point is the front edges of the tongue, whereas the blood is from the posterior edges of the tongue. Okay. Now the noon, alhamdulillah, tip of the tongue touching the gums of the two top teeth. Khalas. That's the tip of the tip of the tongue. Yes. Do we agree? Yes. So, na is you're going to put the exact tip of your tongue in the center behind the two teeth, there where the two front teeth go into your gums. Noon. Do you hear a difference? Is your tongue moving when you say It should be like Do you have a do you have a different exit point for your lamb and your noon now or not? Lamb noon lamb. You're flattening your tongue with the lamb to be able to touch the heart palate, the lamb behind your teeth or the gums behind your teeth. So Okay. 
قل أعوذ قل أعوذ برب الناس. Okay. So you have to try that one. No. قل قل أعوذ برب الناس. Tip of your tongue behind the two. Okay. So alhamdulillah, that's okay. As I said, it's okay. Allah. So we had the noon was the gums, right? The ra is the heart palate. It's also the tip of your tongue, but it's the heart palate. Ra, ra, ra. Okay? So you're not going to say ra, ra. You're going to take the tip of your tongue to the heart palate. Ra, ra. But don't say ra. Because if you say ra, I mean, there is no ra. Because the ra needs to have repetition. Okay? Say it. What did you want to ask? Well, I was, I was going to ask about the roll of the tongue. Mm. So you need to have that, that vibration of ra. Yes. Okay, so the, with the tip of your tongue against your heart palate. Ra. 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 Okay, good. So that is supposed to be easy. Now comes the nice part. It's the ta, the dal, and the ta. Okay? These are supposed to be um, your teeth. Okay? These are supposed to be your teeth. Okay, this here. Does everybody see this? Okay, that are the teeth. Okay? So now here, your ta will be here. Your da will be there and your ta will be there. Okay, so the tip of your tongue, the ta, nam, the ta will touch your gums the closest to the roots. There where the line is, where your teeth go into your gums, that is where you're going to put your tongue for the ta. Okay, so you feel the line, right, where your Teeth go into your gums. That is where you say T. And you will hear the air escape, does, don't you? T. Okay. Why does it escape? Well, because it's very, there is space for the air to leave between the, the point of articulation and the instrument of articulation. Point of arc articulation is the gum, and the instrument of articulation is the tongue. Okay, so there is some air escaping. So that's T. Then you go above that line and you say D. T, D. Do this, T, D. You just go a bit higher. T, the line, D, a bit higher. Are you moving the tongue? T, D. And then to have the T, you go even higher. T, D, T. Now when you're bringing the tip of your tongue higher, do you see that it gets easier to pronounce the ta? It does. What a lot of people do, they pronounce the ta, but with the tip of their tongue on the line where the teeth go into the gums. And this is why they can't give this very heavy sound to the ta. Because when you push the front of your tongue there, then there, it will push the back of your tongue upwards. So say it again. Ta, da, da, da. Okay, who, who, who is moving the tongue three times? Okay, good. What you now need to do is you need to exercise this when you read Quran. Now it's easy because there's ta, da, ta. Now every time you read Quran, you are going to use this different exit point. Okay? Uh, for example, Sirata Alladina Anta. You see? So you're going to put this into practice practice. This is inshallah your homework for next time with Surat al Insan again. Now you are going to pronounce each letter at its exit point. I'm sorry this might be quite boring class for you, I don't know, but you need to know it. It it is it is helping you inshallah pronouncing the Qur'an and reading the Qur'an correctly. And this is why a lot of people don't like to study. Because they say, I want to learn Tajweed. 
and then they say, I want to learn how to read the Quran, but they don't want to, they want, don't want to learn all this. This is the only correct way to, towards what? To, towards reciting the Quran. Uh, yes, please. Excuse me? That's incorrect. Yes. Yes. Yes, please. No, you don't have to learn this. This is for the next level where the teachers will teach. They will learn all the theoretical parts of it. Now for me, it's more practical than it's theoretical, as you see. So it is Did you, some of you before, did you pronounce the Baad with the tip of your tongue there where you are pronouncing the Ta Del Ta? Yes, sir. And that's where the problem arises. You see, because then you're saying Baad, Ba, Ba. You're saying Ba. Why? Because that's the tip of your tongue. Now you know that you need to bring your tongue back to the fifth uh, tooth, and there you're going to say Ba. And then you can do this. Yes, what did you want to say? Uh, no, you. Uh, which letter are you referring to? The ta with the two points? Yes, unless it's voweled. When it's voweled, but we will get to that, then we don't allow the air to escape. So I won't say kitab, ta, kitab. I, would, I will put more pressure and say kitab. Oh, okay. So when, I, uh, when the ta is voweled, there is no air supposed to be escaping. It's only when she's silent. But nevertheless, we will say that it's a letter with sect, meaning um, air escaping. Yes, Because that is also a, a fault or a mistake that a lot of people make. You see this? That's wrong. It's a dry ta. And not ta. Yes. So air only escapes when you name the letter? No, or when the letter is silent. At rada. Met. Met. You see? Like for example, I would say, Habibi, I would say, Ka-ta-ba, but I would say, Mak-tuba. You see this? Yeah? Ma-kana. I'm not doing it as when I'm saying, Mak-tuba. So when it's silent, it's there. As well, yes. Hatha-hu shakhsun fasakat. Then he all the ten letters. Or eleven. Ten. Ten. Who, who else? A question? Okay, nobody question? Even when it does escape, yes. when the air does escape with it, the, 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 is it supposed to be. Because when you go to Saudi Arabia, you hear them say, like, mustafin with the. I think that was loads of air escaping, but. In which letter you say? The, the ta. When, when you say ta, which letter are you referring to? Okay, ta. Ta. Yes. Yeah, uh, how, how much, when, when, so, so like you said, uh, I think it's a word, that, that word, when you put the sukun and the ta, how much air is supposed to escape? Okay, how much air doesn't really, uh, as long as it is not fahish, <coughs> meaning it's over-exaggerated, and because of that, that the letter is being turned in, transformed into another letter. So if you were say at raba, that would be too much. So at raba. <coughs> Then, alhamdulillah, we have the tip of the tongue touching the edges of the top two teeth. Okay, the tip of the tongue touching the edges of what? Of the top two teeth. And that's for the wa, the the, and the tha. What you need to know, the tha would be the tip of the tongue right under the edge, like your tongue goes under the edge, okay? And that would be the, the. The then would be against the edge. Now, so we would say then. The would be, if these are my front teeth, the the would be here, you see this? So don't stick your tongue out, don't go like the, that's wrong. The, okay? Then the then, so this would be the, front of my teeth, that's my tongue. Third, the there would be this, against the edge. Then, 
and with the va, I'm going a bit higher. It's like like my the tip of my tongue is a bit thicker when I say va. So I'm taking the tip of my tongue and like a bit of the upper surface of my tongue. But it's not like that, but it, it looks like it. So I'm saying here, I'm pushing against it and I'm saying wa, wa. So you have the th right under the edge. Th, don't, when you go th, it's wrong. The tongue stays in the mouth and we say th. Th is a bit more to the back and then wa is actually pushing against yani, the back of the edge. Wa. Why again? To be able to produce that heavy sound. Wa. Fa, vel, wa. Under, against, bit higher. Fa, the, wa. Okay, try it. Okay, say it. Higher and against. Yeah, it's like we really under the edge, yeah. against the edge, and at the back of the edge. Okay, is, is, is that clear? Okay. And that is where we are going to pronounce these letters. Okay, they're also a tip of the tongue. Okay. Any questions about these letters? You know, now when I'm going to listen to you, I'm going to correct you even on your articulation points. I would say, no, your gene was too, too much to the back, no, too much to the front, no, your wa was... Bl and all of a sudden, as I said, you're going to feel that your mouth is like very big. But now they say, you, you have a big mouth, you say, yes, that's true. <laughs> I told you, it's one of, there's so much going on. So now, um, I'm going to have a break of two minutes, I need to stretch my legs, not more, uh, maybe three. Um, the articulation areas of the tongue is the sod, the seen, and the zay. And this is going to be problematic, especially for you. Because you are um, a person who goes into the details of the details. Which is, no, which is good. But it's going to be challenging. So it is, listen carefully and write it down if you like. The sod, the seen, and the zay, the edges of the top, and lower front teeth close together and the tip of the tongue comes near them. Meaning that the edge of your front teeth is going to be very close to the edge of your lower teeth. Front teeth, right? So you can't pronounce the, these letters when your mouth is open. That's what they say. But you don't need to close it and shut it. So your teeth, upper teeth and lower teeth are not supposed to touch one another. There's a small gap between them. Okay? And... The tip of the tongue is just missing the edges of the top and lower front teeth. Okay? So, if these are the teeth, okay, these are... Don't you have like a skeleton or something? The five one. You could try going for the next week. No, I mean, a plastic one. Yeah. One the size one. Okay, good. So, imagine... Upper teeth and lower teeth. They are now almost touching one another. But they are not. Okay? There is a small gap. Now, front teeth, uh, I mean upper teeth, lower teeth. They are closing. The tongue will be just behind them. And will not be touching the teeth. Seen. Saad. Zay. Zay. Now, the zay is difficult because when I pronounce the word zoo, zoo, where am I? Where am I in my mouth when I pronounce zoo? Zoo. Do you feel that I'm like putting pressure on the sides? Zoo. There is something going on here. Wrong. Zoo. Not zoo. Zoo. Yes. These letters are supposed to have a whistle sound. Whistling. Like the seam is sharp, very sharp. Seam. Okay, try let, to, to let me say it first. This seam. Salam. Salam. Okay, if you now wait one moment. Do you hear the whistle sound when I say? 
سلام سلام اوكي سلام عليكم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم مس Do you hear this? That's the sharp sound of the scene. Scene. So your teeth are going to be close to one another, the upper teeth, and your tongue will be right behind it. So the scene is very sharp. And then you have the sod, sod, saw, saw. Okay? So you might feel that the sides of the front of your tongue are touching your what? The side of your teeth. to stabilize your tongue, to keep it in the middle, not to touch anything. That's okay. Sod. So you're putting pressure on these teeth here, so that your tongue stays at place. Sod. Zay. No, now I heard that the tongue was moved. You need to stabilize your tongue, as I said, and then you're going to use the same thing, you're just going to change the sound. سين زي صاد سين زي صاد Is your tongue when you say صاد Is the, top of your, the tip of your tongue going upwards? Listen to yourself Say سين زي صاد Is the tip of your tongue going up or not? It's trying to Okay, it's trying to Tame it Okay So you're going to keep the tip of your tongue At the same height as for the سين زي صاد صاد سين زي صاد and this is why in some قراءات they merge between the two letters like I said they say اهدنا الظراطة it's merging the the صاد and the زي right okay is that clear yes please yes say it again Oh no, both are correct. You can say ZA and you can say ZA. It's both are, both are correct. Are okay. Okay. Is that clear? Okay, yes. You have to bring the back of your tongue up. So, but you can't go upwards with the tip of your tongue. A lot of people will do this to create this heavy sound because that makes it easier. But you're not allowed to bring the tip of your tongue upwards when you say saw, saw, saw. Okay. The last letters for today, before we have that little tiny break, are the letters of the lips. We've seen all the letters of the tongue. Now we've seen all of them. What did we see? We saw the back of the tongue, which was the calf and the calf. We saw the last two third of the tongue, which was for Zod. We saw the middle of the tongue, which was for yeah. the what? Jim. Not Jim. 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 Now, Shin and Ya. Then we saw the sides of the tip of the tongue, which was for the Lam. The sides of the tip of the tongue. And then we spoke about the very tip of the tongue, which was for the, the noon. The very tip of the tongue was for the noon, right? Behind the teeth and the ra while touching the palate. Okay? So, did we see five exit points of the tongue or not? We did. You see? Because the side of the tongue is one is the last two-third and the other one is the first two-third. Okay? So, these are the exit points of the tongue. Okay? And then the tip of the tongue was also used for the sod, the zay. And the scene, scene. Now the last one remaining is the lips. And the lips is either both lips or either the upper teeth into the lower lip. Okay? Both lips is for well, ba, and meme. Well, ba, and meme. And the fa is the two upper teeth into. The lower what? Lip. Okay? And you don't put too much pressure. So you say F. So we need that gentle sound of the F. No? 
Yes. Uh, where, where did the front two teeth actually hit? Them? Well, if you were to draw a line right in the middle of your lip, it would be behind that middle line. Fur. Uh, and not fur. You see? Fur. It's just gentle. It's no problem. Nam, so F waja. F waja. Fa, fa. It will be more to the inside than it's to the outside. Okay? And like this, we have seen all the letters today. What does this mean? Well, practice. We are going to practice after my break, inshallah. Uh, we're going to practice all of these letters, and I'm going to ask you to read some ayat um, of Surah Al Insan. Alhamdulillah, uh, What's the time now? Uh,